What's up everybody, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports here and today I'm going to be showing you how to do an install on this ADD Bomber front bumper for the 2018 to 2020 F-150. Now, in case you don't already know, this is our 2020 giveaway F-150, which we're completely building out. We're giving away the whole truck with all the mods and everything already installed. There's still plenty of time to enter and win this thing. So if you wanna check out the giveaway, we'll have a link down in the description where you can go ahead, jump over to the website, punch in your email. It's really simple, definitely worth taking a look at. Now, a few other quick notes before we jump into the install. You can tell that this is the version of this ADD Bomber bumper that uses the rigid 360 lights. So there's a little section in the middle where I go into some of the wiring and the bracket mounting for these lights. If you have the other versions of the bumper that are Baja Designs or the light bar version, that may not directly pertain to you, but we'll put a time code you can jump to to kind of skip that and move ahead if you need. But it's just worth noting, the rest of the install is gonna be basically identical. So everything else you see here will really help you out to get this put onto your truck. And the other thing I wanted to know is that this bumper will require you to cut your front crash bars as well as a little bit of trimming on that inner plastic liner and the fenders. So if that's not something you're comfortable with and you don't want to mess with that, it's probably best to opt out now and I wouldn't consider this bumper, but if you're okay with making those cuts, then this is going to be a pretty good setup for you. So with all the details out of the way, let's get right into the install. First thing we got to do here is disconnect this fog light harness so we can unplug it from the back of the bulb tucked up in there. And then we're also going to pry this little connector off that's attaching to the bumper. Once you've got your connector and your harness free, do the same thing on the other side. Now we need to remove both of these little bumper caps on the front. Some people can just pry them off by hand if they're loose enough, but I find that it helps to take a pry tool or something to get back in here. Just kind of get it between the plastic. And you're gonna pop that forward. There we go. And as you can see, it's just a couple clips that are holding it in. So once you have it peeled back, then you'll have access to the screws behind it. Set in behind the bumper now, you can see that there's two nuts on each side that are exposed and you're gonna need a 21 millimeter deep well to get around these. So we're gonna take all four of those off. There's one last nut back here behind the bumper that you're gonna have to get on each side. This is also gonna need that 21 deep well, but it's worth mentioning that these are super tight. It's really hard to turn them by hand because there's not a lot of space. So we're gonna use an impact on this one. Do the same thing on the other side. So as you can see, the bumper's already starting to sag and come away from the balance. So we're gonna pull it out towards us. That way it's kind of coming off the tow hooks here and then we can work on getting the actual tow hooks themselves removed. So on the newer trucks in this generation, you'll have this kind of shroud around your tow hooks. Some of the older ones don't have it, but it's pretty easy to get off. There's some little pressured tabs in the inside under here that you sometimes have to pop out if it doesn't wiggle free, but it should slide forward. You can see there's little nubs that you'd have to pry back if it wasn't coming off. So we'll take these. And then for each tow hook, you're gonna need a 15 millimeter socket. You're just gonna come underneath here and undo these two screws holding it in and we can get these hooks off all the way. Moving inside of your fender here, you're gonna to wanna to use a seven millimeter socket to remove this little screw up here. And then you're also gonna want a seven thirty seconds to do these two little screws that are kind of holding on to this air dam piece. Once you've got all your screws removed, you're gonna to wanna to obviously do the same thing on the other side for pretty much all of these steps. 
then I'm gonna take some blue painter's tape. I'm gonna run it along the edge here on this valance because we're gonna wanna pry back the fender, the flare for the fender, I should say. So this comes off, that way we can get the whole valance free, but I don't wanna chip up the paint on it. Then once you've got this valance free, there's actually one last little plastic clip hidden back here inside. So you're just gonna pop that out as well. There's that little clip. Now we can work on peeling off this whole valance from the front. It's basically just held in with plastic clips. So I'm gonna start from one side and kind of work across. With the balance out of the way, you're gonna to wanna to come to the bottom of your headlight and there's a screw right here that's a 10 millimeter that you need to remove on each side. Now, obviously we've got these aftermarket Alpha Rex headlights in here, but it looks exactly the same on a truck with factory headlights, so that won't mess with this at all. The other thing you can do while you're here is get your pry tool and pop these little plastic clips out from underneath, just like that. You can see there's two right in here on each side. So once those are popped out, you can pull it forward and then we'll get this whole air dam off. The air dam is pretty loose and close to coming out, but you do need to come over here to where the valance was connected and there's three more 10 millimeter screws tucked in here. So I'm gonna remove all three of those, then the whole valance will come out and you actually only need to reuse one of them to mount this clip back into place to hold the valance later on. So not too tricky. So with that last one out of the way, you can see this is pretty loose and then we'll pry the air dam down just like that. And it should come all the way out. And you can see there was two screw mounts there that aren't gonna be here anymore. So for this corner piece, all we need to do is reinstall one of the 10 millimeter screws right here in this pocket. All right, there we go. And of course with this, you're gonna wanna do these same steps on the other side. All right, now let's clip our valance back into place. Well, we have come to one of the trickier parts of the install that I know is gonna frustrate a lot of people, but with this bumper, because of the way it's designed, you basically have to cut the crash bars. If you wanted, you technically could leave it in, but it's gonna look super silly because it's completely exposed here. And the whole point is that it's a little bit higher clearance and gives you more approach angle onto your tire. So with that being said, we can cut it pretty far back, pretty much right to the mount. There are two bolts that go through it and hold it here, but the way Ford designed it, you can't really get those bolts out. They're basically stuck in unless you were to start cutting things off the frame and subframe within here. So we're gonna chop it out. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Once that's clear, we can kind of continue on working on getting the bumper mounted and eventually we'll come back and actually cut this plastic too, but I'm gonna wait to cut that until I can see where the bumper sits. So that way we don't cut too much or too little. With the crash bars cut and cleaned up, we're really close to being able to actually put the brackets and the bumper itself on, but I wanted to do a quick deviation to talk about the wiring and kind of the electrical side of things. So we have the bumper that uses four rigid 360s. If you have the Baja Designs version or one that uses light bars, some of this information may pertain to you. A lot of it's gonna be a bit different. If you wanna skip ahead, we'll put a time code on screen right now where you can jump past all the electrical and wiring stuff and get back to the bumper install itself. But for those of you that are interested or wanna know about the electrical, let's jump right into it. As you can see here, we've got some harnesses already ran, and when you order the bumper, you may be able to order it with the lights, but if you didn't get it that way or you bought the bumper separately, you will obviously need to purchase lights to go with it. Now, one thing to note is that Rigid's 4360s don't come with harnesses in the box. So you're gonna need to purchase a separate harness, and you probably want to because each harness is really only built to run two lights, so with four up here, two harnesses. That's what we did. 
I've got them ran in here where we have our grounds connected. The powers will connect right here. I don't have them attached right now, just for safety. Then the wire harness runs up and across the back towards the firewall and down behind the intake over there. Now, from behind the intake, I ended up kind of running the wires underneath the brake booster and into a little factory grommet there where the main harness goes in behind the dash. If you kind of cut, there's a protruding sort of knob section above it you can cut off and actually make a hole through the top of that. That lets you go right into the cab. It's really convenient and both harnesses were able to fit. That's where I went in to get behind the steering wheel or behind the dash. And then from there, you can also tuck your relays up and then bring the rest of the wiring harness down underneath the intake along the frame and it'll come out the bottom where the bumper would be. Overall, I didn't have to cut or solder or modify the harnesses to make any of that fit. It was able to run pretty cleanly through that whole area. It is a little tight on space coming from the battery to that side, but you can make it work. And I didn't want it hanging or dangling on the engine where it was gonna burn up. So I think this is a pretty good way to do it, especially if you don't wanna add wiring or have to make your own harness the rigid harness will get the job done. Then from there, the only thing you need to do is worry about mounting your switches in the dash, which we have. And then you're also gonna to wanna to get some connectors so that way you can connect the lights to the harness because the way they provide it, it still doesn't have plastic connectors that actually click and attach or weather sealed connectors for that matter. With the way they provide it, you'd still have to solder or cramp all the lights together and it's just not a clean way to do it. With all that being said, we have all the wiring done. The other thing is showing you how to put the brackets on the rigid lights because they also don't explain how to do that. So we'll take a look at the bench real quick and I'll show you how to put those together. For each one of your rigid 360 lights, when you open it up, you're gonna have some hardware that comes with it as well as a base mount bracket for each light. And you would think it'd be really straightforward with just two screws that went in, but they're actually a bit more complicated than that to put together. So you're gonna take your bracket, this is gonna be the bottom section, and you're gonna wanna drop the carriage bolt through the top. You'll see it's square cut so that doesn't rotate. You're also gonna have a regular washer and a lock washer for this. So for just the sake of putting the hardware together and not losing it. We'll drop the regular washer and the lock washer on as well as our nut, but this is what's going to attach to the bumper itself. So this will come back off when we mount it, but we want to have the carriage bolt through because it's hard to get it in and out once it's actually on the light. Now we're going to slide this through. You can kind of wiggle it into place. So it should sit like that where it's sort of angled forward or makes like kind of an L shape. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is we'll need to use these larger Allen head screws to attach that bracket, but the nuts form that it comes with are gonna drop down into place. There's a little kind of notch section in there that'll hold these, and you basically wanna position it so that the nylock section is pointed towards the inside of the light. So I'm just gonna kind of slip that in there, and we'll do one on the other side as well. There we go. And you may have to give that a couple tries. Sometimes it's hard to get it to fall right in where it needs to go. Now going over the top of those nuts that we just popped in there, we're gonna have these little plastic rigid caps. And when you flip them over, you'll see that there's actually a cutout for another nut on the inside. And the way you're gonna have it positioned is it'll kind of pop into place like so, where it says rigid going downwards. And with that, you're gonna to want to take the smaller of the nylock nuts and put it in place inside the cap. So once you have it in, the white nylock section will be kind of pointed up or towards the inside of the light. I'm gonna hold that on and wiggle this down into place. There you go. Now that's clicked in. That'll hold both of the nuts in place and we can do the same thing on this side. All right, there we go. So those are clipped together. Then all we have to do is kind of get this bracket lined up and we'll run the two larger Allen head screws through first. So now all those screws are in, they're in there pretty loose, so there's a lot of motion in this bracket, but you can tighten them down pretty close to being completely locked in to where if you put a bit of pressure, you can move the light. And usually that's about where you want it is just where you have to force it, but you can get it to slide into place. So that way you can make adjustments on the truck. But that's generally the idea. As you can see, it goes together pretty cleanly. It just isn't immediately explained. So with all that out of the way, the only thing we have to do now is actually get the lights onto the bumper. Now that we've got the brackets on our rigid lights, we've come to the back side of the bumper and there's gonna be three Allen head screws on each side here with some nuts on the back that are holding this bracket that goes underneath. And this is kind of the main bar that the rigids will attach to. So I'm gonna pull this whole thing out so I can mount the lights on the bar and then put it all in as one unit.
I've got all of our rigid 360s lined up in there. Everything's mounted pretty tightly. We left them a little loose as far as the hinges are concerned, just so I can adjust the angle of them once they're on the truck and we can decide how high we want that beam to sit. But the one thing I didn't mention earlier was these little fog light pockets or these kind of pod pockets in the corners. And we did get lights for those as well. We have some dualies here that are sort of a wide cornering pattern. And what I'm doing with these is they're going to mount with their factory hardware right onto the bracket in the truck. But then as far as the wiring is concerned, uh, I actually made a couple of quick like little H10 to Deutsch connector adapters. So that way these will just plug right into our factory fog light switch. It reduces the need to run a whole nother harness and add more extra wiring, especially because the fog lights that were factory are gone. So we might as well utilize that wiring and that switch that's already there from Ford to keep stuff a little bit nicer in the cab. So that's what we're gonna do there. We're gonna mount both of these and then we can start working on getting this bumper on the truck. While we're still behind the bumper, we do have these little threaded clips that are gonna go on. So I wanted to just put these on here briefly before we work on the rest of the hardware. And they're just gonna kind of push into place right here. So now we're getting to a little bit of a tricky part. In order for this bumper to mount to the truck, it has kind of a skid plate built into it that needs to mate up at the bottom here where this cross member is. And in the past, ADD had a bracket that actually attached to the mounts for the lower control arms and came over. Now they have a slightly different bracket that seems to slide in underneath the skid plate. I think this is a better design, but I don't necessarily know if it's gonna be easier to slide this in here first or to put it on the bumper and then put it in. So we're gonna try it, um, just undo these two bolts underneath get the bracket in there and then line the bumper up with it and hopefully that works, but I'll let you know afterwards if that was the best way of doing it or not. So as you can see, magically got this thing worked up onto jack stands here, and then I have our floor jack helping to support it. Realistically, if you're doing this and you've got a couple buddies to help you hold the bumper in place, that's gonna work probably a lot easier. But with the way I have it set up now, we have that bracket that we just put on underneath the skid plate, and I have that pushed out towards the front of the truck as far as I can go with this bumper kind of loosely against it. So I'm gonna bring the back of the bumper up just a little bit so I can line up those holes. We'll run the bolts through back there get them somewhat tight so it's keeping the bumper in place and then we can work on getting the fronts attached. The reason being we don't wanna do the fronts first and then push that bracket back and not be able to get behind it to get our bolts through. So let's hop underneath and then see what we can do.
I've got those two nuts and bolts in the back kind of tightened down just enough that they're holding everything in place, but it can still move up and down a little bit. I just didn't want to get it locked in and not have that adjustment, especially because we still have some gap at the top. So we'll come back to those in a little bit, but with the bumper pushed out, this is our last chance to get these little brackets in here for the tow hooks. So I'm gonna slip these up into the frame rails and then just put one of the factory bolts through each one so that way it doesn't disappear. And then once the bumper's in place a little bit more, we should be able to get that loop part of the tow hook back on there. So we've got two holes on the front of the bumper here that line up with the holes for the factory mounts. And then we've got an Allen head bolt there as well as a nut and a washer. So we're gonna run these through on each side and then I'll work on getting the other two bolts on the inside of the bumper. Now that I've got these black nuts and bolts through here holding the front of the bumper up and on, we just need to go ahead and run this second silver bolt through with the fender washer. It's gonna use a 9 16th socket. And the hole is just back here. It's actually the same one that we put those little threaded inserts on earlier when the bumper was on the ground. So I'm gonna run that in through the back and do the same thing on the other side. After you've got those bolts through the back, now's a good time to go back down to sort of the skid plate section that we were at earlier, retighten those bolts because everything's going to be aligned at this point. So if you're happy with it, you want to lock that in. And I tightened that off camera, but now that means we've got to come through and get these tow hooks reattached. So I'm going to bring the tow hook up. It sometimes helps if you have a friend to hold it in place or you can kind of support it with your hand. And then there's a hole in the side of the frame where you can reach in and push on the bracket. And we're just going to use the same factory hardware, like I said, from earlier. So let's try and get these on here. The tow hooks are on, so we are in the final countdown now. Everything's looking pretty good. If you haven't plugged in your fog lights and stuff, you'll want to do that real quick. But the last thing we really need to knock out is just cutting these inner fenders to get this trimmed up so we don't have this little wing down here. And they're not super sturdy. You could maybe get away with using a box cutter or something if you had to, but we've got the Dremel hooked up. So I'm just gonna use the Dremel, kind of slice through here, give it a nice even line, and then you might be able to add in a zip tie up at the top to help keep that stiff. And we should be looking really good. All right, guys, that is gonna be a wrap on this ADD Bomber install. I think the bumper looks excellent on here, super high clearance. I definitely like the round light look in this. It kind of blends with that Baja style that we've really been pushing for on this truck. And there's a whole lot of light output here. It's extremely bright. And with the little pods on the sides too, it's a massively wide arc that we're getting. So I'm really happy with this. I'm really excited for whoever's gonna win this truck too, because this is a great setup, but I will say, it is definitely a little tricky to get this thing installed and I would recommend just in hindsight having an extra buddy or two to help you out with lifting this thing and getting everything in place. It's not gonna be the easiest install to do in your driveway, but it can be done. It's just worth noting that you may have to work a little harder on this one than some of the other mods that we've done. If you're interested in picking up one of these ADD Bomber bumpers, you can head down in the description below. We'll have the links to that as well as the link to our giveaway page so you can get entered to win this whole truck. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.